Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Lori Rubin, and it is my privilege to introduce our very special guest, David Baskovich. He is a former chief technical officer at Microsoft, and he is now the CEO and founder of Milio, and has been for a few years. Uh, this is part two of David's Exploring the World of Travel Photography. Last time, David shared with us some of his personal insights into his travels and why Milio Photos is what he calls his second brain. So this is part two. Today, David's going to dive a bit deeper into his travel photography and why Milio Photos is so important to him. We have with us also JC Figueroa. He's going to be in the background helping to answer any questions that you might have. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll open it up for a few questions that we'll give to David to answer. And I just wanna thank David again for your special presentation today. We look forward to your insight into travel photography and Milio photos. We'll go ahead and let you uh, take over. Okay, well, I wanna thank everybody for joining us. Um, I guess the people in the US, almost no matter where you are, it's hot. Uh, so maybe this gives you a chance to be inside, but um, I'm gonna talk about a lot of places that I've been that are even hotter. Well, that's not true. I'm not gonna talk about the places, but still, thank you for joining me. So I this is the second of two webinars that I've done. And in this one, I plan to get into a little more technical detail, particularly about uh, some of the hardware configurations I use to make things work when I go to strange places. So I then just kind of a peek and I'm going to try this time to be done uh, in about 40 or 45 minutes so we have time for questions. So um, if you came to visit us at Milio, we have this office. It's actually a pretty beautiful office and it was built before COVID. So the whole idea was that people would enjoy coming into the office all the time. Um, and a lot of times when I go in there, I get to the front door, both red lights are on. That means there's nobody in the office, but I'm taking us off track. If you did come and visit us and we turn the red lights off, we open the door on the wall to the right, as soon as you walk in would be the company's mission statement, which is changing the way the world remembers. And the reason I want to say that is most of this webinar is concentrated on the photo experience, but I'm going to weave some other stuff all the way through because the to me, the point of Milio is memories are very important in our life. They're important in the short term because we have to remember when is that plane, uh, where am I flying to, who am I going to meet, how do I get from here to there, even things like, you know, what camera equipment do I need and how should I think if I'm taking cameras or um, where am I going that I might be taking a lot of pictures and how do I want to prepare myself for that, that's short term. But, you know, it's, it's interesting that um, You know, quite a few years ago, uh, my father-in-law passed away and he had lived a full life and uh, he got to have everybody come and be with him at the time that that happened. And he insisted that he wanted to be in, in his own home. And so the hospital made it possible. And then the interesting question is, what was around him in the last few hours of his life? And the answer is people and pictures, people and pictures. And it's like two sides of the same coin. The pictures were about the most important memories in his life. And those memories in many way, ways define who he is, what he did. And for him, they defined what had been important to him. So that's the other context of your brain has to deal with both the short-term memories, because otherwise you can't do anything, but the long-term memories are there as well. They're often more important and they're often harder to keep a hold of. And then there are a lot of them. I mean, there are too many of them. None of us can keep up with all of our memories. And so that's why um, I'm now testing out a new way of describing this. And you'll see that this sort of pops up in the presentation that my Leo in a way is your second brain. So 
Mylio is a place that you can keep all your photographs and have them with you all the time, no matter where you are. But it's also a place you can keep all your documents, all your trip itineraries, my daughter's fourth, fifth grade report card, uh, that letter that you got from a friend, you know, seven years ago, uh, the menu for the restaurant you're going to in two weeks, it's all in there. And so sometimes I refer to it as your second brain and your second heart. Because when you look at some of those long ago memories, they really reach to your heart at least as much as they do to your brain. Now, having said all that, one thing that I found is true, like, uh, you know, I'm planning a trip to Peru and I was there just before COVID. And then what I noticed was it was long past the time when people are supposed to have supposed to no longer be taking pictures with cameras. And when I went to Machu Picchu, I started counting about a third of the people had cameras. What was really interesting is the people that had phones and cameras, including a couple of teenagers. So it's not just old people. And they would take a lot of pictures with their phone and then they would look at the pictures on the screen. And if it was a picture they really liked, they would take the same picture again with the camera. So Milio, so they end up with a lot of pictures and how do you handle all that? So Milio is also your photo genie. Okay, so moving ahead. Now, by the way, Milio is my second brain. If you'll notice I'm in Milio, I'm an album view and I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation. I created these slides in PowerPoint, I'll admit that. Hey, but David? I'm doing, I'm doing yes. Sorry to interrupt. Can you share your screen with us? No, I want people to just guess. I'm sorry. I'm glad you're. Right. <laughs> okay. So all this time you haven't seen, uh, I think, I don't remember which way I wanted to do it. Okay. Let's try it this way. Okay. Do you see my screen? I see my Leo. And do you also see? Uh, the desktop? No. Oh, you don't just, see just well. my Leo. Okay. We'll stick with that. And I may have to reshare again later. Okay. Okay, so this was where I started, your second brain, your photo genie. And then I was pointing out, I'm doing a presentation, which was created in PowerPoint. It could have been created in any other tool. And I'm doing it in Mylio. It's part of being my second brain. Every presentation I've ever given, uh, the book that I wrote, they're all in Mylio. It's just where I go for everything. So when you go on a trip, these are the things that I think you think about relative to memories. You know, you want help creating great memories. So, and then there's a lot of mechanical parts of doing that. Like, you know, I, I, a lot of friends started to tell me that they, they're wondering if they should take fewer pictures because they don't know how to keep up with all the pictures. So, but then there's other things like, you know, imagine if you went on a trip a few years ago to see the eclipse and you got several hundred pictures of the eclipse, you took them all with your phone, which is fine. And then somebody stole your phone and those pictures were gone. So that's something people worry a lot about. They um, take a lot of pictures and they know should, they should work on them, but they also want to spend their time with friends, not computers. Uh, what about when there's no internet? So one of the people who um, was at my last travel webinar uh, was wondering how you deal with that because he's not taking picture trips where there really is no internet. Now, by the way, where is there no internet? Of course, you know, you could be in the outback of Australia and there's no internet. You could be at the Beverly Hills in, um, at the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills and there's internet, but it's terrible. I actually got, um, Two, two nights free because the hotel manager admitted to me, said, look, it's a really big problem. We have so many rooms and we haven't figured out how to get fast enough internet to all the rooms. Um, so that's a question. Then there's, um, you know, you, it's easy to take thousands of pictures. Then you're suddenly drowning in all these pictures. And then do I have to take a computer? Like, you know, I already am taking a phone. Maybe I'm taking an iPad. Why isn't that enough? So these are some of the kinds of questions we're going to deal with in this webinar. Okay, so Malio, your pictures, your memories, your life. We're going to really talk about protecting your pictures, organizing your pictures, and enjoying your pictures. That's kind of how I think about it. So um, before I do that, I'm going to 
just briefly touch on a couple of things I talked about in the last webinar. What do you do in Mylio before you leave? So one thing I do is I keep all my trip itineraries in Mylio. So whatever I have with me, my phone, my tablet, my computer, my desktop, my notebook, um, I have all of the information for the trip and I collect it as I go along. So when I get, so somebody asked me after the last time, how do these, how does this information get in there? And the answer is, um, I mostly I do it from my phone. I use the share framework. So like on my iPhone, there's a little box with an arrow pointing up. And when I get a piece of email, I send it or a trip itinerary or whatever, I send it to Mylio. And then I take two seconds to put it into the right folder. So for example, my next trip, which is in September, is to see a ceremony called the Garawal. And there's a bunch of information about the trip. It's all the information I currently have. So now if it was a trip that I took a while ago, there could be more information. Now that one has less, but it's all here. So, okay, this one has more. This one even has like customs documents and a menu. It's, you know, it's, it's just where I, so that's one thing I do. And then um, I happen to like to organize around folders. And we're actually, what I'm about to show you is going to be very relevant when we get to the, some of that technical stuff I said I would talk about. So uh, this is my away folder. Now, just to put my folder organization into context, um, this is sort of my workflow. So I have a bunch of high level folders. Uh, I have one, I'm way behind. So I have a folder called new. These are pictures I've taken that I haven't really spent time on yet. Eventually I'll spend time in them. And then if they're pictures that I'm gonna show, they'll eventually end up in this folder. And this folder is kind of organized the way you would expect a folder would be organized. And in particular, since we're talking about travel, I have a trips folder, which only has 293,000 pictures in it. Okay, I'm lying. 293,134 distributed across 1,941 folders. So then we have Africa trips, Arctic, Arctic and Antarctica trips. And then if you drop into Africa, you see all the trips I've been in in Africa going back, you know, like 20 years. Now, here's an interesting thing, and then I'm going to get back to the next part of the presentation, but these trips are also all in my calendar, and I'm purposely not doing this demo around the calendar because then I'll spend the whole time in that. We will come back to it, but the way that events end up in my calendar is that there's, this is one of the least known features in Mylio. There's a little toggle switch in the info panel for a folder that says, show that folder as a calendar event. So if I click in this folder and say, um, whoops, okay, never mind. I'll just go to, so notice this, this trip took place in 2013. If I go to the calendar and I go to, 2013, and uh, oh yeah, I was debugging before and I changed the setting. You can control how many events show up in the calendar. And I have a lot of space, so I like to have more events. Okay, but you'll see it anyways. If I drop down into 2013, uh, there's the Africa trip. And if I tap in that, um, on that, I'll be looking at the pictures from the Africa trip. It looks like pictures from an Africa trip. Okay, so. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the presentation. Okay, so let's start talking about what happens when you're on the trip kind of in terms of taking care of things. So um, protecting, you wanna never lose a picture. You don't wanna worry about losing pictures. Most importantly, you want it to be automatic and fast. I used to carry extra disks. 
I used to spend time backing things up across multiple devices. I don't do that anymore. Milio does it for me. And then um, I want to work in my pictures and I want to be able to do it on my computer, but I also want to be able to do it in my iPad and my phone. And I want to have all my pictures there all the time, wherever, whenever. So when I'm on an airplane between places, I can work on this trip, but also all the pictures in that new folder that has all the ones I haven't worked on yet. And then I want to have everything with me all the time. Okay, so this protection thing, I can't emphasize it enough. These are all examples of pictures that, I mean, for example, I got to um, Tanzania. I got there a day late, but I got there at exactly the right time. It was a friend and I, and we were out there, and we saw the exact moment when the, those two lions uh, captured and killed that buffalo. Now, this one is not as, I don't know, I don't know if that's morbid or not. This is not as morbid a picture, but we are on a boat in Alaska, and um, all of a sudden, uh, you know, one of the guys is looking through his binoculars, and we thought we were going to go out and look for whales. And he, he asks the boat captain, what's that? And the boat captain says, oh, my God. I haven't seen one of those in 20 years, and I don't know if I'll ever see one again. It was a glacier bear, an extremely rare type of bear. So we changed our plans, went close to shore, got into Zodiacs, carried our heavy equipment, and I got this picture. And you know, this is interesting. It proves that pixels don't necessarily count. This was taken with the 2.6 megapixel camera because that was, that was the state of the art in those days. And I made it into a print that's two feet by three feet. It's the size of a painting. And you can count the hairs on the bear's back. So then there's a picture. This is not a travel picture, but it's um, my younger daughter on the left at her bat mitzvah. And my right daughter, this picture was taken at a rehearsal because you can't take pictures on the, the actual day looking at her. And that the way they're looking at each other, uh, it's indescribable. And then finally, I mentioned the eclipse. This is a picture from the eclipse in Montana about five or six years ago. Now, here's the thing about all these pictures. Let's say something happened to them before you had a chance to do something. Like maybe you even got them onto your uh, computer. Let's say you have a RAID array. So RAID arrays can tolerate the failure of a single disk or two disks. So a lot of people think that because they have a RAID array, they're protected. And they're better protected than if they didn't have a RAID array. But let me tell you, I have six RAID arrays. And over the past 10 years, every one of them has had a failure in at least in which at least one disk was lost. And three of them have had failures in which two disks were lost. And in all the cases where two disks were lost, I had to rebuild the array, which means anything that was on that NAS was gone. So, you know, and if if uh, I was in Madrid once and somebody stole my phone from my backpack. Now, if I was taking pictures and I was at the eclipse and lost my phone, maybe before it could even connect to the cloud, even if I was backing up to the cloud, how do I get those pictures of the eclipse again? How do I get that pic those that picture or the pictures of the lion and the buffalo or my daughters or the glacier bear, I can't. So one answer is the cloud. It's actually a really good answer. Uh, a lot of people think that, no, nobody thinks I'm anti-cloud, but because I use the cloud all day, every day. Having said that, you know, there's the standard issues with the cloud that everybody knows about privacy. But um, so I was on a trip, it was about 10 days long. And four days into the trip, I decided this was a trip. Uh, I was sloppier and I wasn't as automatic in those days. Four days into the trip, I loaded all my pictures. And then they went from, they'd happened to be on a computer from my computer to my iPad and my phone. That took 17 minutes. Uh, the amount of time it took for the pictures to get home, this was a 10-day trip, was 11 days. Now, how could it take 11 days for pictures from a 10-day trip to get home? Because uh, this was in a first-class hotel in Mexico. The internet was pretty good. 
And when I left the hotel, only 20% of the pictures had made their way home. On the 11th day, I got home, and 20 minutes later, the rest of the pictures were on all, all of my vaults. So the cloud is too far away and too slow. They're sort of related. And sometimes, like, you'll go to places where there is no internet. That's already happened to me four or five times this year. Like, this was a trip I took to a place called Svalbard. A lot of cruise ships go there. It's uh, north of Norway. And, um, you know, some of the cruise ships are very luxurious. Uh, there's no cell service and there's no internet. So, uh, but I still want every picture protected. And by the way, I don't, on the particular boat that I was on, that's the boat. There wasn't really enough room to open a laptop anywhere. So a lot of the people didn't get to work in their pictures. So they got back to land and I was sitting there and, working on them on my iPad, sometimes my phone, but mostly my iPad, I didn't need any table or desk space. So how does that work? Um, okay, so I'm gonna go through a number of scenarios. Number one is I'm on a trip, I'm taking a lot of pictures and there's no camera in the equation. I'm, you know, I take most of my pictures now on phones. My favorite phone is actually the, uh, okay, I don't name these products. So when you hear these names, don't blame me. So I take most of my pictures on a Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Okay, that's a great name, right? Because it's a fantastic camera with a fantastic sensor and the sensor goes out to 280 millimeters optical. That's like a lot of zoom. And I get great pictures with it. But my other favorite camera is my iPhone 14. I'm guessing next month I'm going to upgrade because a new iPhone is going to come out. And the only, when these new phones come out, the only thing that's ever really better is the camera. They're like cameras that have phones, not phones that have cameras. So, you know, I'm saying you should have all your pictures in more than one place and that the cloud is too slow and often not available. So how do you do that? So my answer is your phone is a hotspot or you can arrange for it to be a hotspot. And so that means when you're sitting on an airplane or at my daughter's house in Vancouver, or maybe I'm in Africa, but I'm taking a lot of pictures on my phone, I turn on the hotspot, the tablet connects to the hotspot automatically, and the originals travel between the two devices at warp speed. Now, if you remember, like these are two of my travel devices. And if you remember, I talked about the away folder. So um, there's a feature in Mylio. I can't directly demonstrate it here because this is a vault and vault doesn't show tap to sync, but there's a feature that allows me in my away folder to say that I want all my travel devices to have originals for every folder that's in the away folder. So what happened was when I was on that trip, we were just looking at the folder for these pictures was in the away folder. So I didn't have to do anything. I mean, I took the pictures. Actually, that's not true. I had to move them from the camera roll to the away folder, which I do. And as soon as I did that, Mylio said, wait a minute, I have to make sure that the originals for that, those pictures are on my Samsung, on my iPhone, on my tablet, and I didn't have a computer, so I'm done. But in this case, even with these two devices, I have all my originals on two devices. And uh, you can now get an, uh, an iPad with up to two terabytes. I think that's kind of overkill, but one terabyte, I mean, even when I go on two long trips and don't empty the tablet in between, I still have several hundred gigabytes left. It's more than enough for very long trips, particularly if all the pictures you're taking are with your phone, because even that Samsung doesn't produce very big pictures by camera standards. So that's case number one. Okay, what about if I did take a camera? This is a picture in Ireland. And um, that's uh, my RX100. So I have two favorite small cameras. Okay, I'll admit I've kind of become a Sony fan. Actually, I have three favorite small cameras, an RX10, an RX100, and an RX1. That's the RX100. And um, 
it takes 24 megapixels uh, that the pictures are as good as any big camera. I mean, that was, it really changed the industry when it came out. So um, I'm taking pictures. Okay, so now I have two problems. One is I'm taking pictures with my phone, my camera. I didn't bring a computer. How am I going to load them? And then the other problem is I don't want to have my phone pictures in one place and my camera pictures in another. Like, how do I get them to be all together? So here you see a device. Um, there is the device. I don't know if that helps you see it better. It's a pretty small device. And I just take it with me on all my trips. Now, what does this device do? Um, you plug it into, it's USB-C, you plug it into your iPad and it has a card reader. Now, here's the really interesting thing. So first thing you might think is how good can the card reader be? Like, I'm gonna load pictures into my iPad, really? Like, isn't that gonna take forever? Why didn't I bring my computer if I already went to Ireland? So it turns out that when Apple did USB-C support and they also at the same time optimized the um, access path for pictures specifically on the iPad. And before that, when you loaded pictures, they had to go into the camera roll. But when you load pictures uh, using the card reader on your iPad, if Milio is turned on, they go directly into Milio. And I benchmarked this. It is the fastest raw import you can have. I don't, I mean, I have a very fast desktop computer. I have very fast notebook computers. Uh, and in terms of the fastest way to load your pictures, it turns out I don't always do it on the iPad, but if I don't, it's not because of speed because I can sit there and go through multiple cards and it's almost freaky how fast it is. Now, here we go again. I took pictures with my phone. I took pictures with my camera. I loaded the pictures into uh, through the iPad using that little device. And all the pictures are now on both my phone and my iPad. I'm protected. I didn't do anything. I'm protected. And not only that, wherever I am, like let's say, you know, I did a lot of horseback riding in that trip and we were often in confined places. And so when I was on the horse, I wasn't carrying my iPad. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. But I always had my phone. And sometimes at lunch, I'd want to go back and look at some of the pictures, either from that day or the previous day, the pictures from the camera and the pictures from the phone. And I could do it on Milio because with Milio, all my pictures are everywhere. Okay, so can I take a camera but no computer? I got asked this question for many years and the answer now is absolutely. Okay, now let's say we hit the big time. Now, some of you may not shoot with cameras, but let's say you do. So there's uh, one of my Sony cameras. JC actually just conver converted to a Sony and he got an even bigger lens, but you know, there's a camera with a pretty big lens and now I'm in an environment where um, I'm taking pictures with my phone still. I never stop taking pictures with my phone. It's amazing. But I'm taking pictures with my camera too. And I often take a lot of pictures. And I've introduced the a notebook computer into the equation as well. So um, now I have an opportunity to have all my pictures in three places. What? Yeah. I mean, that notebook computer runs Mylio and the away, it's one of my travel devices. So the away folder on that notebook computer is said that any folder inside it wants originals. So that's not something I think about. I don't do something on each computer. I, you know, I'm I'm could be loading, by the way, the same USB card reader will work on that laptop computer. Most notebook computers don't have card readers anymore. But that little, um, let's call it a dongle, whatever you want to call it, works on my notebook computer as well. But I've chosen in this case to load in my iPad. Um, and as soon as I load in my iPad, the pictures will automatically be on my phone, my tablet, and my computer. And then I can work in any one of them. Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to uh, close this because it'll make things faster. Now, this is. Um, a device I'm really, okay, I have to be careful here. 
I'm excited about this device. Now, I was more excited when two weekends ago I got to see my grandkids because they live in Vancouver. It's not that kind of excitement, so I don't want you to get the wrong idea. But I'm genuinely excited about this device. This is a tiny little device. In the next picture, you'll see it with some other devices that, um, you know, and I, a phone is a pretty good hotspot. Uh, now, there are some challenges with the phone as a hotspot. First of all, if it's an iPhone, it will only create a hotspot when it's connected to either the internet or another um, network. Now, on that little boat that I was on in Svalbard, the ship had Wi-Fi. I mean, most boats have Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi wasn't connected to the internet, but because the iPhone could connect to the Wi-Fi, it said, okay, I'll create a hotspot. Uh, the Samsung phone doesn't have that problem. So I'm more likely to use it as a hotspot because it'll create a hotspot anywhere. It'll create a hotspot um, in Svalbard on an iceberg with no boat anywhere nearby. It'll just create the hotspot. But the phone hotspot is, uh, okay, I'll use a technical term. It's damn fast. But it's not really that fast. It's just fast compared to the internet or cell phone speeds. But this little box is basically gigabit fast. It's as fast as the fastest you're going to get at home or in the Milio office. And it takes up very little space. And then, uh, okay, I said I'd be more technical. So because of that, I'm going to talk about stuff I don't normally talk about. These are three Ethernet ports. Now, those Ethernet ports are interesting. By the way, this box costs about $125. One time, it's not a subscription fee. So this is not an expensive box. Um, okay, so um, there are two important uses for these ethernet ports, and it's really important that there's more than one of them. So first of all, let's say you are in a place that has wired ethernet. Some hotels have it, a lot don't. If they have wired ethernet, it's probably faster and more problem-free then the hotel's Wi-Fi. So what you can do is plug this device into the hotel's Ethernet, and then it becomes your hotspot, and it lets you get through to the Internet through the hotel's wired network. And on top of that, you're secure because this device implements a firewall, so your devices will all talk to each other and they'll talk to the internet, but nobody can come from the internet or from another room in the hotel and get to your devices. But the second reason for the internet, for the ethernet ports, when I show you the next picture, and this is about as technical as I'm gonna get, it's a bit arcane, but if you follow it, it's really worthwhile. So um, there's another picture of the same thing. And uh, I'm sure you, sorry it doesn't show the model number, but if you decide you're interested in write to me, david at myleo.com, there's a specific model of this you want to get. And I don't remember the model number right now, so but I'll get it later. Anyways, um, why would you even bother with such a complicated device? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, if you think you might be going to a place with really shitty, sorry, that's a technical term, really shitty internet or maybe no internet, and you just want to be sure that you can create a hotspot no matter what, this device does it. It doesn't need anything else. It'll always create um, a, a local network. And it's really, really fast. Now, what's the? why does the really fast really matter? Well, let's say that you really took a lot of pictures, like, you know, hundreds or thousands of pictures, and they're taken with that camera where every picture is 50 or 60 megabytes. And so you could easily be shooting um, 10 or 20 or 30 gigabytes of pictures or even more in a single day. And then you want to get those to all of your devices. Well, if you set up that um, device there, there it is sitting. It's actually, it's attached to power. Uh, the power is USB-C, so the same kinds of uh, chargers you use to charge your iPad and your phone will also power this device. Sometimes you find USB-C even on airplanes or hotel rooms. Um, it's actually connected to the notebook, and I'll explain why. 
So there are two ways. Oh, there's the model number. Okay, you don't have to write to me. You can anyways. It's the gl.inet. That's the name of the company. Okay, remember, I don't pick the names. They didn't ask me and I didn't tell them. So that's another wonderful name, the gl.inet AX. You can go and tell all your friends, I bought a gl.inet AX and it's $125. Now, there are two ways to set it up, the easy way and the slightly harder way. The easy way, it's kind of like your phone. You plug it into power, it automatically creates a hotspot. And once you've connected your devices to the gl.inet one time anywhere, like when after you got it, they'll just connect to it automatically. So the, the easy way is you turn it on and like a minute or two later, all your devices are connected to each other and that's all there is to it, done. Now, if you do that and you took all those pictures, you're gonna be transferring pictures between devices at about 300 megabits per second, which is actually really fast. It's better than you're gonna do in any phone hotspot, but you can do twice as good. And the way you do that is, okay, in order to do this, you need um, this, this, and this. That is, you need the little card reader, you need the um, gl.inet, and you need either a tablet or a computer and an ethernet cable. And what you do is, okay, this little card reader uh, is multi-purpose. You can use it to charge your computer. So you can be loading pictures while you're charging your computer. And it also has an ethernet port. So I said I was gonna get technical. You might be regretting that, but and I'm almost done with this part. So if I plug that into the iPad or the computer, and then I take an ethernet cable, like a short one, a foot, two feet, three feet, and run it from this box to one of, the, one of those ethernet ports that I showed you on here, I can then connect to that device. That, that particular device will be connected to the gl.inet by ethernet. Why does this matter? Well, when you have two devices sharing information with each other through the hotspot over Wi-Fi, they're also sharing the Wi-Fi transceiver, the transmitter and receiver. And so each device gets half of the bandwidth. But when one of the devices is coming in through the wired connection, the other device is getting all of the bandwidth. So bam, you're transferring pictures at 700 megabits per second. And the way that looks is you took, let's say 2000 pictures because you know those monkeys were jumping around or the, the birds were flying fast and you didn't know how to get the picture or whatever. And then you're watching in Milio uh, the process, the progress during the import, and you're watching the numbers and the pictures are moving between devices in the sync panel and instead of going, let's say there's, I don't know, a thousand pictures to transfer. So the count goes a thousand, 999, 998. No, it doesn't. It goes a thousand, 981, 926. It's going down so fast that you don't even get to see the individual numbers going by. It's okay. It probably says something weird about me, but I, I find it kind of exciting every time I see that, that I can load that many pictures and have them go between all the devices. And then like minutes later, all of my pictures are on all of my devices. I'm protected. I don't have to think about it anymore. I can work in the pictures in any device and it's fast. So um, yeah, you can transfer a thousand huge RAWs in minutes. When I was in Hokkaido, where most of these pictures, where all these pictures were taken, uh, most of the time there was no internet and I shot about 10,000 pictures. Would have taken days to get those pictures to transfer to the cloud when there was internet and it took minutes with Milio. Okay, so I promised I'd be done. I'm gonna do a little more and then I'll open up for questions. So the point of all this is, um, this is not stuff you would kind of figure out in your own. I'm gonna touch a little bit the rest of the stuff. A lot of it you can figure out in your own by figure it fooling around in Milio, practicing, reading webinar articles or forum articles, but having the away folder, having your devices set up before you leave, 
having a little bit of extra equipment, although you can do it with just your phone, which you're going to take anyways and use its hotspot. And then having all of this happen automatically means you can focus on your pictures knowing that Mylia will protect you. Okay. So now how do you keep up with your pictures? Um, and, you know, the problem is there's so many pictures and so little time. Uh, okay, so there's a couple of answers. I'm going to do the technical part, and then I'm going to do a little bit on the non-technical part, and then I'll pretty much be done with my talking. So one problem is um, I want to work in my pictures. Like when I've taken pictures, first of all, I want to look at them. I want to see how I did. Did I get something wrong and I want to fix it? But, you know, like they were really great pictures. And my dream scenario in a way is that I get home and I've already finished working with all my pictures before I get home. Now, this train goes to Machu Picchu. It's the only way to get to Machu Picchu unless you want to ride a horse or walk. And it has, okay, another technical term. It has marginal internet. And it, it's pretty nice but there's not much space. It's, you know, it's not a sleeper train or anything. So it's an example of just like the boat, just like being on an airplane, um, of when you're traveling, you have often have very little space, maybe no power. Like this is a place that there really isn't power. Those things are, the power's on two hours a day. You're on the move. I'm on the move and I want to work on my pictures anyways. So um, one thing is it's nice to see where I've been and I can do that in the tablet or the phone and I can do all my reviewing and editing on the tablet and the phone. Yes, I can do it in my computer. You already knew that. Now I'm going to switch out of here and just show you a couple of things. And, and this is stuff you probably know, but um, so I was in Israel and I started going through, I'm sort of behind in organizing. This this one I'm not that behind on. I went about uh, a month ago, a little over a month ago. So here's a folder with 44 pictures that I haven't organized yet. So I'm gonna show you how I do it in my computer, but it's the same way that I would do it if I was um, on my phone or tablet. And I actually, I do a lot of this on my phone and a lot of it on my, tablet. And with the iPad, I often use the magic keyboard. So then I have a keyboard. And my rating system, which is a little different than what I told you last time, is red for keep, green is keep but don't show, and purple is delete. And then five stars are the ones that I really want to show like in a slideshow. So this is a red. And you notice that I have a feature that's turned on by default, but you should make sure it stays turned on. Okay, it's uh okay. Let's see if I remember where it is. Because I turned it on and then I just leave it on. I think it's under general. No. Yep, here we go. Auto advance. So whenever I do a rating, go to the next picture. If it's not on, you should turn it on because what it means is I can go through about a picture per second. It's not because Mylia doesn't go faster. I actually look at the pictures before I decide what to do. And by the way, if I use the keyboard, five is for five stars. So I just hit the five key. And then this is a keeper. It's I don't even want to show it. I mean, so that's an eight. Eight is equal to uh, green. And so I can go through this about as fast as you know, um, that's another eight, that's an eight. Oh, that's a six. Okay, that's a six. Uh, I'm not getting a lot of fives here. Okay, so I that's I had that picture twice. I'm gonna do this on purpose because I wanna show something. I wanna delete that. I could delete it right away by going to the garbage can. Instead, I'm gonna make it purple. And then what happens is um, 
whoops, that was wrong. I go back and I correct it. I want that. No, that's fine. It's a six. That's a six. Okay, this one is kind of blurry and I want to delete it. So I hit zero. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole folder, but yesterday I timed it. I had one folder that had uh, 300 and some odd pictures and it took me less than 10 minutes to go through the whole folder and have everything sorted like this. And then what I'll do at the end, the first thing I'll do is I'll go into the uh, filter bar and I'll say, uh, show me all the purples. Now there's only two, but now what I can do is um, select all and then go over here and say, delete. But I'll have looked at them first. It gives me a chance to make sure that I really want to delete them. And then I'm done. Now I'm going to show you one other thing. And then I'm going to go back to where I was. Okay, let's say that you have, um, now I'm going to show you this, even though this one is only partially done. So like, for example, uh, this was a folder with, it had 340 pictures. I deleted all the deletes. So it's got all the red, it's got all the reds and all the five stars and all the rest. They're all there, right? That took me about 11 minutes to go through. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is something else. After you're done, what's going to happen is you'll go through, and if you're like me, I have way too many five stars. Now, I'm going to tell you two things that are true. Let's say I invite some friends over. I just got back from Israel, Greece, Antarctica, whatever. Do they want to see my pictures? Absolutely. Do they want to see 2,500 pictures? No way. I mean, they'd rather not see the pictures. So how do I get down from too many five stars to the number that I want? So I'm going to show you how I do this. So the first thing is I'm going to say show media in Israel, June 2023. That's the top level folder. I started there and dropped down into here. And these are folders for individual days. So now it pretends there's no folder structure. And I'm seeing all the pictures for the entire trip. Now, if we open the info panel, just so we can see, that's uh, 1,500 pictures. Okay, now let's say that I've done my rating and I'm now making my second pass. So I'm gonna go back to the filter bar and now I'm gonna ask it to show me all the five stars. Okay, so now I have 344 pictures. Now, my general rule of thumb is when it's pictures for a major trip, I want to have about 250. And the only reason it's down at this relatively low number is I haven't rated all the folders yet, but I want to show you what I would do if I had. So the first thing I'll do, this is a bit obscure because I'm on a computer. I can say control A. I selected all the pictures. I'm going to make them all also red. And even if I had done it for all of my pictures, and there were, there probably will be when I'm done, 900 or 1,000 of those five stars, way too many, it still doesn't take more than a few seconds. So, so now they're all five star and red. So what I can do is, um, so first of all, I'm just going to close that so I have more space. And I'm going to close this one. I can go through and I can say, okay, um, Okay, I kind of like, I don't know. Okay. I don't really need this one and this one. I'll pick the ones that I don't think should be five-star anymore. And I'll usually do it in grid view because it's very easy to do in grid view. Okay, there's a really good example. I don't need that two pictures. It's a bird, but I don't need both pictures. And then what I'll go up do is go up here. And when I hit the five-star, those pictures will no longer be five stars, but they'll still be reds. And so I can take a pass through a fairly large, like if I go on a really big trip and end up with 3,000 five stars, on the first pass, I'll get down to 1,500, and then I'll get down to 700, and about an hour and a half later, I mean, that's a trip with a lot of pictures. All I've gotten down to the number that I want in the slideshow. So, okay. So now if we go back here, so I can do all that 
on any one of my devices. Everything I've shown you on my computer doesn't work quite as well on the phone. It works works just as well on the iPad. And I would say I do 80% of my editing on the iPad because I can do it anywhere. So the memories of a lifetime, my trips, they're always with me. And that's probably for me the most important part. I did all of this in Mylio. I didn't lose the pictures. I was able to edit them wherever I am. And I can always look at them. I can always share them. I can always bring back the memories. I can send pictures to other people. Yep, that's the whole thing. So, okay, I didn't finish in 40 minutes. I took 50, but I'm happy to answer questions. Very close. Uh, David, we had a question. Uh, what's the red flag signify? What is what? What? I'm sorry. What's the red flag signify? Which red flag? Well, when you did your five stars and then you marked oh, them so all as I, red. Okay. Uh, red means, okay, let's say that, um, let's say I took 10 pictures of my daughter or an elephant or whatever. Like it's really easy, you know, and, and they're, they're all pretty good. And so um, I don't want to show all 10 of them, but I don't want to delete them. There's two reasons I don't want to delete them. One is because I don't like deleting things, but there's a more important reason. So um, I spent almost uh, six months. Uh, okay. In the past, I made a book for my mother while she was still alive. It was her whole life. It was over 400 pages. Now you might think that's crazy, but here's my experience is people will come over to my house and they'll see the book and they'll pick it up. And so two guys came over and I actually have two books. One is all of her life and one is 10 years of her life. He picked up the book. There's no words in the book. He didn't know any of the people. We couldn't get the book away from him. He spent an hour and a half on it and then his friend was starting to get a bit antsy. I gave him the other book and then he was gone for an hour and a half. Now to make a book with that many pages, like when I gave it to my daughter, she's 40, um, that's this daughter. Um, I would find a picture of Rachel in Africa and in the past I had decided one of them was five star, but now I really care. I'll go back and look through the reds and maybe one of them is actually better. So that's, but that's the difference between, so five star is show, red is backup show, green is keep. I just don't want to delete it. You know, it's not something I'd ever show and purple is delete. That's my system is probably, you probably could make do with just stars, five stars, three stars, one star, or you could make do with just colors. but. Uh, and you probably don't need an ethernet cable when you go on a trip, but that's how I do it. Okay, a couple of people were asking if you edit within Milio photos to edit your images. Oh yeah, I so forgot to show this. So, okay, most of my pictures I don't edit. Uh, okay, 90% of the editing I do in Milio. So if I, okay, let's go back here. Um, Okay, so uh, like I could take this picture, maybe one of the things I wanna do, let me change the aspect ratio to free crop. I could crop it. Uh, maybe I wanna straighten it out a little. I mean, that's, that's sort of the extent of what I, oh, and sometimes pictures are a little over or underexposed. All that stuff I do in Mylio. So I'll be going through and um, okay, this would be a good one. I mean, sometimes I actually take the time to do a little more. So if I go back to, uh, where was I? I should put my glasses on, but I'm being, okay, I'm gonna, whoops, I hit the wrong thing. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna put my glasses on because I can't do this if I can't see. Whoops. So most of the time, I don't even open the edit panel. I'll show you that as well. Okay, if I go back here, this picture really should be cropped. Now, there's something else like, oops, okay. I like free crop. I'm going to tell Mylio to remember that it's a free crop. Okay, 
So now for what? Okay. But if I look at this picture, maybe what I really want to do is let's cancel this. I want to take this person out of the picture. I can't do that in my Leo. Or I want to create a panorama. I can't do that in my Leo. Or do, do more complex corrections. So I do editing and third party tools all the time. Uh, from Mylio. Now on a computer, what I'll do is I'll say uh, photo open with Adobe Photoshop 2023. And then I'm going to edit the original because if I'm already going to go into Photoshop, I don't really need to keep my Mylio edits. I mean, I could, that's the other option. Oh, I know what's going to happen now. Because of the way I'm sharing the screen, you're not going to see this, I think. Yeah, do you guys see where it says Photoshop? The Photoshop is loading. And now it is up on your screen, Photoshop. Okay, now I'm in Photoshop. And uh, one of the things I can do is uh, I can select subject. Let's see how good a job it does. Okay, it didn't do a great job. If it had done a great job, I could then go in and do an erase. Um, if when I do the erase, it will fill it in with other stuff. And so, um, deselect. This probably wasn't the best picture to pick, but when I'm done, I save it and it's back in my Leo and I'm done. Um, and so now I'm back in my Leo. Now, the other way, the other time that I do this is. Uh, let's go back here. Well, this is an example. This is a PowerPoint. And if I click in it, I'll be in PowerPoint. So I do Word, I do Excel, I do Photoshop. And on the iPad, I typically use Affinity. Um, yeah. So yes, I do editing. I do most of my pictures. I don't edit at all. The ones that I do edit, 95% of them I edit in my Leo, and then every so often I'll go into uh, another tool. But it, that's for pictures and for documents, I go into other tools all the time. Okay, great. Uh, Jane had a question for you. Uh, she's asking if you take duplicate photos, um, do you take the time to sort, delete duplicates before dealing with the stars and colors labels? Uh, usually not. If I have a lot of, okay. when I take duplicate photos, part of the purpose of the stars and the labels is to, if I really have a lot of dupes, then I'll have a lot of purples and then they'll get deleted. It's just very fast to do. That's different than dedupe. If you mean literally dupes, Mylio has a, has dedupe, has a dedupe uh, tool built in. But you're just talking about taking a lot of pictures because you're on a trip and it's so easy to take a lot of pictures of the same thing. Yeah, I believe that's what she's saying. Okay. Um, David, do you ever use the travel vault sync preset settings? Well, the setup I have with the away folder uh, is my way of doing that. The travel vault is another way of doing the same thing. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> well, okay. So uh, Catherine's asking, do you share any of your photos or videos on YouTube? That's an interesting question. <laughs> uh, Instagram, yes. Uh, okay. Facebook, less often. And we're about to have uh, web sharing in Mylio. So that's the thing I most want is the ability to, uh, you know, have a place where I can put have an album and then share it with friends and family. And then as I add pictures, they get to find out the pictures were added and they can go and see them. That's great. I do sometimes, but I never, I've, I just end up not sharing to YouTube. I use YouTube. So here I'm playing with exposure. Contrast. This is probably not a great picture. So when I get to rating it, if I haven't already, this should probably be a purple. Okay. Anyways, yeah, next question. Okay, so we're at the top of the hour. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up with a question for you. If there's one key takeaway or piece of advice you'd like the attendees to remember from this webinar, what would it be?
memories are important and taking the time to the relatively small amount of time to organize them so that you really can use them in the way you want uh, is it's it's important it's it's like a life important thing great okay um i did share with everybody a link to uh, david's first webinar and we'll get this one posted by tomorrow david thank you so much for sharing your insights into your travel photography and how you're using milio this was a bit more technical than the first one so hopefully you folks got some tips and tricks and uh we look forward david to having you on again we'll pick yeah. another topic but thank you so much really appreciate it thanks everyone for joining us today as well yeah, you got me going and cropping again. On <laughs> Can't <Yeah>. stop. <laughs> uh, that's great. Okay, David. And uh, JC, yeah, thank thanks you. for answering questions in the background. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Have a great evening. Very welcome. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone.